we posted a poll asking PeopleSoft customers, which option would you choose? If you were creating a new activity guide, what tool would you use to build it? Just the pure People Tools activity guide or the newer activity guide composer? And as you can see from the results, 75% of respondents chose activity guide composer. So let's talk about these tools so you can decide for yourself which one to use when creating your own activity guides. Now, when activity guides first appeared, apps teams such as the HCM team built them using the People Tools activity guide tool. And as you can imagine, customers wanted to change the activities associated with those activity guides. The problem was the changes represented customizations. So the question was, how can customers alter activity guides to fit their business processes without creating this upgrade headache? The PeopleSoft HR team had a fantastic idea. They created something called Activity Guide Composer. Let me show it to you. So I am in Activity Guide Composer and I'm looking at Activity Guide Composer templates. So the navigation to get here was Enterprise Components, Activity Guide Composer, Activity Guide Templates. And if we look, we see 29 rows of Activity Guide templates. Again, these are just Activity Guide Composer templates. These are activity guides that were delivered by the HR team. And the idea is that you and I could update the template, but let's, let's try this out. I'm gonna to go to update template. And as you can see here, it allows me to insert a new effectivated row. Watch, I'm gonna to try to update the Oracle delivered row, 111900. Oh, just kidding. You can't update that row. That one was delivered by Oracle. This is perfect. They've intentionally built this to protect the metadata they're delivering. They built it to protect us from customizing and the headache that comes with that. So if you and I want to change the action items using Activity Guide Composer, we would insert a new effectivated row and then use the pencil to update our own effectivated row. Now, what would you do with that effectivated row? You would insert new action items. So if we go to the select steps, Again, you could change any of the metadata anywhere through here, but the main thing is you would change the steps. Maybe there are steps in the delivered guided process that you don't use. You would remove them. Or maybe perhaps there are steps that you do use and they're delivered, but they're just not part of this activity guide. You would insert them. Maybe you want to organize them differently. You can do that here or change something else about the steps. You do that in configure. What if you want to add new steps that Oracle doesn't know about because they're custom bolt-on components that you've inserted into this otherwise delivered business process? So let's exit out of the composer and look at the category. So the category in this case was open enrollment. So if I want to insert new steps, then I would go to the activity guide composer categories, search for open enrollment, And then as you can see, they are effective dated also. So I might insert a new effective dated row, go to the steps and I can see there are 15 steps listed here and we could insert additional metadata to configure the steps that we want to add to an Oracle delivered activity guide. Okay, let's think about this for a minute. If you were to build your own custom activity guide straight, straight, brand new activity guide. Using Activity Guide Composer, you would first create an activity guide category. And what goes into these activity guide categories, by the way? So let's see, it says that this is a step. Okay, and this is the description for the step. And this step has a service ID. What is that? That's a related content service. This one happens to be an application defined related content service, but just like other related content services, it could be defined using a variety of different methods. So, okay, let's think about that for a minute. So before we can create the categories, we need to create the related content services. So what are we at? Related content service needs to be created. Then we gather together those, those related content services into categories, and then we combine them into templates using the activity guide composer. How does that compare to just the core people tools activity guide? Now we'll take a look at that in just a minute, but core people tools activity guides, they have action items and they have templates. They don't have categories. The point of a category 
is to create a collection or a classification of items for a particular activity guide, concept, target, like for example, a life event. There are certain action items that go into life events, but different life events would have different action items, but they might all be part of the same category. And you could pick and choose from those action items in the category. So you could say in a sense that categories are designed to help the functional business analyst organize an activity guide. It would be up to the developer to insert the items into the category, such as to write the people code for the application class to build out the instance or the service ID. Okay, so what does standard activity guides, people tools activity guides, what does that look like? So if I go to people tools and then activity guides and activity guide templates, and we see there are 67. Wow. Okay. So I pointed out the number for the activity guide templates when we looked at activity guide composer and it was in the twenties here, we're looking at nearly 70 of them. And if we go through the list, if we look at them all, what you would notice is that they're the same thing. In fact, what you'll notice here is that some of them will actually be repeated. So some of these are the older classic, the original activity guides delivered on people tools. And then we have the newer fluid versions delivered by the HCM team through activity guide composer. Let's say that you and I wanted to create a new activity guide. Would you need to create a service? Maybe, maybe not. If the point is to collect together navigations for a guided process, then we can just pick them from the menu. We don't have to create a service. What about a category? No, we don't need to create a category either. In fact, it's this easy. So activity guide, and I'm going to choose optimized guided non-sequential. Let's give this a name. Let's go with test AG. And how about test activity? guide. Fantastic. Security in our configure don't customize course. We talk about this in great detail. So I'm going to skip over this just, just to make it as fast as possible. And let's go with contributor because I just want to show you what's the bare minimum. What does it take to get an activity guide? So there used to be four steps there. The four steps were required for classic, but this is going to be a fluid based activity guide. Wait a minute. Does that mean that it can only show fluid content? No, actually it can show both fluid and classic, but these activity guides built using the optimized and fluid template are so much easier to build because we don't need a pagelet. So we don't use, need to use pagelet wizard. We don't need a work center. So we don't have to visit the work center page to combine together the activity guide content and the pagelet to create the activity guide as we used to with classic activity guides. These fluid activity guides are so much easier to create. You go right into action items and you just start adding your action items. So how about item one, item two, and that's it. We'll just do two of these. And I'm just going to choose content type, PeopleSoft component, and then create service. Yes, the activity guide tool will create the related content service for us. It just wants to know what menu items are you going to select from? No categories. You don't have to create the services in advance. See the activity guide composer. Let's see, let's, let's insert a row and let's go service type people soft component. It still asks you what's your service ID. What does that mean? You still have to create the service. Whereas the standard core people tools activity guide will create the service for you. So as described here, the people tools activity guide tool was designed for you and I to create activity guides as customers. The activity guide composer, on the other hand, was designed by the HR team to give you and I the ability to alter Oracle delivered activity guides without customizations. So what do you think? When creating new activity guides, should you create them using core people tools activity guides or should you create them using activity guide composer? Let us know in the comments. By the way, we teach both methods in our configure don't customize PeopleSoft course. Now at JSM pros, we teach tips like this every day. Be sure to check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or do you prefer self-directed self-paced recorded training? Subscribe to gain access to all of our recorded on-demand content, including hands-on activities designed to run on your servers. Now here's another idea. Do you have a team that wants to learn more? 
give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.